it is a very real possibility to reverse autism now. It's not, maybe not in every case, but in most cases we can achieve quite a lot. So I don't use the word breakthrough lightly. What you are going to hear tonight is really 15 years of practice of working of major, um, quite major involvement with homeopathy and a lot of, a lot of thinking. Because my work is really dedicated to you. Because I have to admit that I cannot imagine myself having an autistic child because I like freedom so much. And I was at the airport a few days ago and I saw a child just hitting his nose constantly, constantly. His nose was all right before his hand. And it really affects me quite a lot. Uh, So, my whole search with homeopathy has been to find a, uh, a solution to this problem, staying within the principle of classical homeopathy. I am a classical homeopath. I am not something else. You will see, I will give one, I give one remedy only, at least at the time. <coughs> I only give one remedy. So tonight we're going to start very simply. I have an image in my mind as if we were going into a pool. It will be very shallow, just like it says here, we are all alive. Well, it's not exactly much of a breakthrough. But as we go along, we will go to the deep end. So we are all alive and we are biodynamic. <coughs> And that's what homeopathy interests itself with. All of our cells on the physical plane, I lost my mouth, hold on. <coughs> so physically we can move, we can feel, we feel joy, shame, sympathy, love, heartache, disappointment. All these things mean that we are dynamic beings. We are really beings. And homeopathy supports this dynamic uh, system most directly. It is what is called a vitalistic medicine, homeopathy. It is different from bi the biochemical approach, which has a cause and something should affect that cause. We don't think in those terms. We don't think in linear, but we think very much in, I was going to say circle, but it's really as a funnel this way. Because one thing needs to relate to another all the time. I really need to find my mouse. Ah. Because it will make life more. As we are all human beings, we are connected not only to ourselves, but also to a larger reality, the universe. There is no disconnection between anything, for that matter. We are all connected, interconnected, and physics has proven that, for that matter. <clears throat> and so, the idea of, for classical homeopath is to search in the deepest way what the remedy is for a particular person. And you will see in the end that we go all the way to the universe. Now. It is important to understand health before we can treat disease. To have at least a concept, a minimal, minimal concept of health. 
So health is freedom, which is why I practice homeopathy. Health is freedom on the physical, emotional, and mental planes. For example, so yesterday someone was asking me, can I drink coffee because it keeps me regular? Well, if you drink coffee in order to keep yourself regular, you don't have freedom. This, it may be a very, 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 very small slice, but there is lack of freedom right there. On the emotional plane, if one needs to hang on to somebody, for, for example, there is a problem. We all have a filter that expresses itself on the physical, emotional, and mental level, even though we all think we are perfect. When someone enjoys an emotional state that is perfectly clear, there is no anger, anxiety, or panic at any external stimuli. In my book, I have the example of only the only one person I've ever met in my life who I can claim is really healthy. One does not suffer from anguish, fears, feeling of a lower nature such as laziness, I mean jealousy. There is no laziness or apathy, dissatisfaction, revenge, irritability, sadness, does not see the day of light. None of these are present. Only a gorgeous harmony within and without. And on the mental level, mental level is working without any impediment. The memory is great and the intellectual faculties are keen and clear. With a lack of clarity in thought and expression, the thinking becomes weak. One is not absent-minded, there is no lack of concentration, no lethargy. No dullness, logic is sharp with rationality, coherence, logical sequence, without any room for mental confusion, destructive delirium or paranoia type of ideas are not there. There is this creative service for the good of others as well as for the good of oneself. That's a healthy mental, mental plane. The question is not can I be smarter, but rather, can I be clearer? Oops. So that's what it is. I am perfect. But then one who is perfect would not say I am perfect. I actually like this because it reconciles a lot of things in my, ju in my judgment, or in my thinking. It reconciles us with what a lot of religion says. So we are perfect, really, in a sense, we are indeed perfect. I'm not that healthy, so I'll say I like that. Now what is illness? illness? After a quick overview of health. Well, illness is only a deviation from health. Think continuing. You know, as ourselves, healthy, and disease is only a deviation from health. It is not something separate, really. And when we are ill, it shows up on all levels. The physical, the emotional, and the mental. Always. It will always show up on all three. How much it shows up on each is a different matter. But it will always show up on all three. For example, here, highly physically sick, emotionally uh, much less, mentally much less. Over here we can have physical and mental very uh, not healthy at all, emotionally much better, and so on. So all these different levels can be, are really private to the individual. The mental can be really, really down. Okay. The emotional can be really down as well. So then you die of natural causes. <laughs>